So we're using the brain's electricity, its own electricity, mm -hmm. to kind of fire up certain neurons and, ha and, and kind of get them functioning again and working. Welcome to Healthy Living, Wellness and Prevention, Medical Innovation, The Informed Side of Care. Welcome to Baptist Health Talk. Hi everyone, I am your host, Joanna Gomez. Welcome back to a new episode of Baptist Health Talk where we answer your most searched questions on trending topics. Today we'll be talking about a groundbreaking treatment for tackling depression, who it's for, how does it work, and why it may be a game changer for both the medical field and its patients. We're joined by Dr. Rachel Rohaidi, neuropsychiatrist at Baptist Health Miami Neuroscience Institute. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you for having me. There is a lot of talk around this. It's called TMS. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the basic. What does it stand for? So it stands for transcranial magnetic stimulation. And what is it exactly? Because that sounds like a mouthful and very intimidating, I will tell you. <laughs> it does. Um, so it is basically using magnetic uh, stimulation um, to help uh, with neurogenesis, right? So to um, upregulate or have the neurons of the brain work a little more okay. than they have been. So this is a fairly new treatment. How it did it come about? So it actually came about in the 80s um, and it is kind of the cousin of some of the neuromodulations that we have like ECT, which is electroshock therapy, right? So it's using kind of the a similar concept to uh, change um, the environment of the brain a little bit to reduce the symptoms of depression. Okay. So a lot of times when we think of depression, it looks different for everybody. Yes. Right? And everybody has a little bit of moments where they can feel either a little right. bit blue or right. depressed. Is this for someone who is suffering from severe depression? Yes. So remember we feeling blue and sad you know, if you've gotten fired or if you lost a loved one, if you have a breakup, these are normal things. And to feel sad about those things are normal. Okay. But remember, anything that is a disorder is going to interfere with your ability to function. So are these symptoms stopping you from spending time with family, stopping you from going to work, interfering with your ability to do your work or go to school? That's when you start considering that it's a disorder. Right. So this yeah. is beyond talk therapy for right. those that are wondering. Right. What as you're explaining it to me, I am going to be very honest with you and tell you that in my mind I am picturing someone going into a room and having some lasers. How does no, it work? No. Explain okay. to us the process. Can you put it in layman's terms? Because it Absolutely. sounds very severe. Absolutely. So it's really using the power of a magnet. Okay. And so we're using, and we all know that. We have electricity right, right? We in are, our body. Right. right? Are, that's what we're made of, right. right? So we're using the brain's electricity, its own electricity, mm -hmm. to kind of fire up certain neurons and, and, and kind of get them functioning again and working. Okay. Um, and that's kind of like a very little basic explanation of it. So we're using a magnet mm -hmm. to be able to manipulate the electricity that's already in your brain. So we're not adding electricity. We're not You're changing. just firing on some right. electricity that maybe it's just a little lower right. in the electricity range. Right. Does that make any kind sense? Kind of, yes. Maybe somewhat. Sure. Yes. Um, and is it a, and is it one-on-one? -on -one? How does it work? So there are a full cycle, a full treatment is something like 30 to 36 sessions. Wow. Okay. Right. And so, and and you 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 at Baptist when we do it. Um, our protocol is kind of a 19 minute protocol. Mm -hmm. So, and it's different for different clinics okay. and uh, different organizations. It depends on the machine that they're using. Our particular machine, uh, we have it set at a 19 minute protocol. We literally put the magnet against your, your head and yeah. it's kind of maybe a little longer than this. And we just kind of lay it on uh -huh. top of your head and... And, th and, and it, it goes and that's it. And what is the patient? Not feel? invasive. Any side effects that they feel after or no. Days so after you, you after? sit kind of in a spa chair. We put the magnet on, um, 
you know, we have a, a nice warm room. It's very welcoming with spa music, right? We want it to be very welcoming and warm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it almost can feel for some patients like a rubber band. Okay. Hitting right. A rubber band kind of flicking against your skin, Mm -hmm. uh, right here on the scalp and they can go about their day as normal. They don't have to take a day off work. They don't have to be without food for 12 hours. They don't have We want you to eat breakfast, sleep, go on about your day. You can, if you plan it correctly, you can come in during your lunch period and then go back to work. So you can do all of the things that you do normally, just kind of stop by, get your treatment and leave. What have been the reviews from your patients that have done TMS? So just like with medication management, we have patients that do really well and then maybe a few that haven't Mm -hmm. done as well. Um, and so I think it just depends on the person. It depends on what we're trying to accomplish. When I tell, when I talk to patients about TMS, I tell them it is not a cure all. It's not, mm-hmm. we're, we're, we're looking for a hundred percent. Right. We want to decrease your symptoms by 50%. And that's huge it's for a, a lot huge, of patients. Absolutely. And these are patients that have not responded to medications. That's another thing that I want to Clear, mention. So yeah. it's for what we call a subset of patients called treatment resistant depression. So TRD. So for treatment resistant depression, depression that is resistant to pharmacological intervention, right? Right. So patients that have not done well with antidepressants because of side effects, or it just hasn't done much for them, Uh, different combinations of medications that we can try. They haven't done well with either therapy. So these are for patients that are really kind of at the end of like uh, what else is next for right. them to kind of do. Right. I, I know typically first it's talk therapy, right? Sure. It's yes. kind of like where everybody pretty much yes. starts. Go talk to someone, see if you feel better Then maybe right. medication. And then, and then the combination there, of the both. Right. right. And then the combination. So if you are someone that is on TMS and doing this procedure, do you have to stick kind of with the same format of having talk therapy and staying on medication? I think you should. I think talk therapy can be very helpful, especially during the TMS period. Okay. Um, A lot of times we may be able to decrease medications as we go. We may be able to, I think I've had maybe one patient get off of medication. Amazing. But again, this is really to try and relieve 50% of symptoms. Which is a lot. A lot You're for some feeling patients. very overwhelmed yes. at that moment. Uh, do you have offer something similar to this for kids? Because we know that depression doesn't really, you know, right. criticize, it, it, it goes to anyone, right. no judgment. And so there right? are, there are centers that do treat children. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, you know, since this is fairly new, is. this, you know, we don't have a lot of innovation in yeah. psychiatry, but um, there are still a lot of studies being done for it. A lot of studies in children, a lot of studies in different patient populations, Um, so there's still more to come with TMS. Could it be a one-time thing or really just depends? It could be like, I'm going to do 20 rounds of these, or it just depends on the case. It depends on the case. Yeah. I've had some patients had relief before their 30 sessions. Mm -hmm. I've had some patients that have needed two rounds of TMS to get to where they want to be. So again, it just depends on the person. Uh, so when it started in the eighties, I'm assuming that someone was, whomever was that person that started it, they were probably like, this is not going to work or where did this idea come from? And it has probably evolved so much from when it started in the eighties. What has that evolution look like? So now we have an FDA approval for major depressive disorder. So Mm -hmm. treatment resistant. It's approved for OCD as well as smoking cessation, at least in the psychiatric world. Right. Um, There are some FDA approvals for, um, for other things like in neurology and, and things like this. And, and they're doing, again, m- more studies on that end as well. Um, they have some studies on addiction. There are some studies going on for neurocognitive disorders like dementias. And so there's a lot more to come with TMS. Yeah. Uh, and it obviously differs from traditional treatment. Yes. Denial is real, doctor. A lot of times you're like, I'm not depressed. I'm just feeling a little overwhelmed. How do you know if you are a candidate for TMS? So I think that's a conversation we need to have with our psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. um, And the person will uh, take a very uh, thorough clinical history. 
and see if you are a candidate or not. But certainly somebody with uh, uh, depression who has been treated with medication, maybe the medications haven't worked as well. Mm -hmm. These are people to start looking. What else is there out there? There are other treatments out there, Mm -hmm. right? There's so many, to be be honest with you, that patients can do. Why do you think TMS is such a good one for people that are suffering from severe depression? Well, one thing I like is that insurance does cover it. Oh, that's a huge plus. Right. So these must be very expensive. Extremely. And, um, you know, you always want to go to a center that is well, um, uh, that is ethical, Mm -hmm. that Um, has followed the rules, you know, things like this. You don't want anything which they're going to say, oh, by the way, you you owe us this amount or, you know, you can you can tell when you have a bad feeling of a place that is really just looking for for money. Right. right? And so you you want somewhere that other people have gone that have been trusted, um, uh, a place that is ethical and that's really going to care about how you're feeling and how you're going with your treatment. Have you ever seen or had a patient that you have recommended an X amount number of treatments? It's been successful. They've moved on. They kind of have been living their life and then they fall back, which no judgment for anyone. It happens to all of us. And do they go back for a second round? They do. And is that recommended? I've had patients come back for a second round and they've done well. Yeah. Yeah, Have you found that the more you do, the better it is to cope? We want to be able to get our 30 to 36 sessions um, back to back as much as possible. We don't want really any interruption in Mm -hmm. the cycle of treatment Um, and making sure that we do all of the things that we discussed before. Right. Uh, You know, staying away from toxins, being able to sleep. That's so funny. I was just going to ask you how about diet and how much of that has to do with your depression. Huge, huge. Huge. We know there's a huge interaction between our gut and our brain, right? You are what you eat isn't said for not, right? Yeah, there's uh, a reason behind it. Exercise is very important. But sometimes exercise isn't enough and it yes. doesn't cut it. Yes, but it, but it helps. It can help. So I do have a lot of patients, unfortunately, who are so depressed, they, they, they just can't. Yeah. They, they, they don't have the, the, the ability. energy, the stamina the ener- to go, right. yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but movement is medicine, right? Mm-hmm. So it's going to help, even if it's stretching, even if it's a walk. When I say exercise, I don't mean, you know, one over the other or, you know, you don't have to lift a thousand pounds or <laughs> run 20 miles. Um, it's just moving your body yeah. is important. Uh, the holidays have come and gone. Yes. A lot of people feel depressed during the holidays. But a lot of people also have like this post-depression because of the holidays. Uh, how much is that real? And how do, should we manage that stress? Oh my goodness, it's very real. So, <laughs> I mean, I feel it all the time when yeah. holidays come up, right? That stress of, yeah. you know, how are we going to entertain and who are we going to invite and how, what are we going to buy? Mm-hmm. And, and so we can kind of um, lose track of mm-hmm. what's important during the holidays very easily. Yeah. Um, and then we're kind of left with that stress. Right. What goes up must come down. Exactly. So absolutely. It's a real thing. It's kind of, you know, I need a vacation from my vacation kind of thought. Um, People spend time with their family, which is great, but then you have to leave your family and maybe go back to being lonely. Right. Um, And it's really just finding a community, finding people to, you know, doing your best not to isolate again, getting out, trying your best to get out of the house, out of the bed, moving your body, exercise, um, eating as healthy as you can, and just remembering that you're not alone. You're not alone. We're all Mm -hmm. in this together. What do you see in the future when it comes to TMS? Because since it is very new, I'm assuming that in 10 years, even five, it is going to look completely different. I'm hoping that we can start using TMS as first line and not wait until our patients have not done well for so many years on so many different medications. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we put all of these things in our body, but we don't realize that a lot of times, sometimes those medications can have side effects. And sometimes Ooh. people don't like taking medication. Right. Right. Back to the point of the fact that taking medication is also a taboo, just like yes. saying that you're not feeling well right. is also not something that 
I think it takes a lot to say, look, I'm not feeling well. I'm not right. in a good spot. Right. Exactly. So, no, I agree. So I'm, I'm hoping that we see a change in that, okay. that we could use it first as first line and not necessarily have to have taken medication. Do you feel that eventually in the future, there's going to be something bigger in science, in the medical fields, that's going to even blow TMS out of the park, out of the water, that this is going to be something that we could get fixed? Absolutely. So, you know, we are learning about the brain every day. Um, Our ability to really understand what's going on in the brain is growing. Uh, And so I'm hoping that there are going to be more innovations to help. Absolutely. What, What is it? We only use what? 15% 15% or I is think it that's like what they say, less yeah. of mm-hmm. our brain? So there's so much to uncover Absolutely. when it comes to the brain. If there's one last thing that you can leave us with as maybe somebody right now is watching this and feeling a little depressed and not, you know, taking medication and not quite sure, what would be your first advice to them? My first advice is definitely remember that you're not alone. Um, there is help. It's just, it, can take some time to um, locate the help and even get the help. But opening up those conversations and letting somebody in can be really life changing. So, again, you know, we're not alone. Everyone is feeling down at some point. Yeah. Uh, everyone knows somebody who's seen a psychiatrist. You know, we're having these conversations now uh, and, and we don't have to isolate. Do you see a shift with the conversation change in the positive? Yes, absolutely. We're more open now to talk about certain topics. Uh, We're more open to uh, addressing certain things that we didn't address before. So absolutely. I know that there are some taboos when it comes to different cultures, right? And Mm -hmm. and I will just call out my own as a, a Latina the Hispanic community. It is something that we really do not talk about. Uh, it is very taboo. What's, what do you say to those taboos that exist within different cultures? Um, you know, that's, that's, that's difficult. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm Cuban, but my grandfather was a psychiatrist. So I think Uh in my family, um, it, it was, was very always, normal it was, to talk it was about very it. Normal, yeah. Right. It was very normal, even though there was still a taboo to it, attached to it, but it, it was, it was more, I guess, normal in my family than some of the others. Yeah. Um, but you know, again, it's, it's reaching out and looking for a community. Yeah. And I think that uh, you can certainly find that online. Yeah. You know, it's funny because you say that, but the education component is probably a big thing. A lot mm-hmm. of people probably don't know about TMS or so many right. other different types of therapy that are out there that can actually help them to live a successful, happy life, right. you know, or at least where you can live pain-free. Right. That's that's the goal. Yes. Thank you so much for your thank time. You. Once again, it's a great conversation with you. And thank you for sharing your insights with all everyone here in our audience. Be sure to hit that subscribe button that you see right there on our channel. And make sure you stay up to date with the latest health and wellness information. And of course, we've got all those tips from all our experts. Thank you so much for watching. Find additional valuable health and wellness information on our resource blog at baptisthealth.net slash news. And be sure to interact with us on our social media channels for live and upcoming events. Baptist Health Talk is brought to you by Baptist Health, the warmer side of care.